Hi, Karen Craig Parker here with your weekly human design evolution report. We're going to start looking at the energy for this week first by looking at one of the important players in the outer planets, any of the outer planets, and that's Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. These are planets that I like to call collective planets. They set the tone for what's going on on the planet, not just on a personal level, but on a collective level as well. They let us know kind of what's the plot outline for the evolution of humanity and what are we supposed to be working on together as we go through this beautiful journey of being human and we continue to evolve this human story that we're living in. Uranus has been transiting through Taurus and will be sitting there for a while and Uranus is a planet that shakes things up. It's the planet that is the planet of the unexpected. You can be under Uranian influences and you can be walking along the street licking an ice cream cone. You can put your foot down and find, you know, all of a sudden the pavement is gone and aliens are coming down the street to take your ice cream cone. That's kind of the extreme sort of all of a sudden cataclysmic shifts and changes you can see sometimes in Uranus and certainly this year we've had some incredible uranian kind of events one day we're just fine the next way we're all locked up in a pandemic that's a very uranian kind of an event the challenges or the unexpected plot twists that uranus brings serve the function of waking us up they are so shocking and so destabilizing that they really kind of force us to get down to the bare bones of truth. And the bare bones of that truth that Uranus reveals to us is really all about unshackling us and untangling us from karma, past patterns, old belief system, things that keep us from fully manifesting the truth of who we are, including this phase in our evolution, the power of our own individual directions in the world. Here's why this is so important this week. We have to look at the shift that Uranus made last week. Last week, in Uranus shifted from being in the gate 27 to lighting up the gate 24, the gate of blessings. This gate of blessings, this blessings energy that Uranus is highlighting for us right now is collectively and of course personally inviting us to explore, first of all, the blessings from the pain. That's really the source of blessings in this gate 24 energy. We are in under the influence of this energy. We're taking stock of everything we've experienced. You know, I really encourage you actually literally make a list of like all the grievances you hold, all the past experiences that you've had. Not because I want you to stay there because those energies are victim energies oftentimes. And Uranus is really kicking our butts and telling us stop being a victim. This isn't about victimhood anymore. This is about you finding the lessons, the blessings, the things you learn from those experiences and not buying into the idea that because this has happened before, it's going to happen again and not buying into the idea that you're not worthy of breaking free from those stories, of using those stories, those old pains, those old experiences as catalysts for your growth and expansion. Uranus in the 24 invites us to look at what are the, where are we settling? Where are we taking less than what we want? Where are we allowing for less than what we deserve? And where are we rationalizing a truth that maybe isn't necessarily true? It's like sitting in front of a big mirror with yourself and having to get super honest with yourself. And that's really what Uranus is kind of asking us to do under this influence. Now, just so that you know, in, in sort of in a bigger perspective. The last time Uranus was in this position was during the Great Depression. And that Great Depression became ultimately through a lot of pain, obviously, uh, a, a very big catalyst for big social initiatives, at least in America, for an, a, a time when we began to really compassionately put more action into sharing what we have because we are the products of everything that's come before and we are always in these expansive cycles as humans i fully expect that whatever we end up going through right now as difficult and as painful as it is that this is a catalyst this is uh, an initiation an opportunity for us to look at first of all where are we personally and individually settling for less than what we want and deserve and number two 
Where are we allowing less for others? And how can we push against this experience and reevaluate what's really valuable in the life, in our lives, in the world, and use that renewed understanding of value to increase not only our own quality of life and well-being, but increase the quality of life and well-being for others. We start first with ourselves though, because it all starts with ourselves individually. And that's not selfish. Your story, your personal story is a microcosm of the macrocosm. You are a hologram of the human story. And what you do on an individual basis adds to the story of what's possible for humanity. And as we continue to build momentum around what else is possible, we reach a critical mass of possibility and your individual shifts adds to a collective shift that ultimately has the potential to trickle down to all reaches of humanity on the planet. So please don't ever discount the importance of you doing your work for the sake of the world, for the sake of your divine siblings. The sun this week starts in the gate eight, the gate of fulfillment, moving to the gate 20, the gate of patience. The earth is in the gate 14, the gate of creation, moving to the gate 34, the gate of power. Now, these are really interesting energies because both of our sun energies are energies that are located on the throat center, energies that are regulated and implemented through language and communication, gates that put in place the template, the verbal template for what it is that we want to create with our lives. So this entire quarter that we're in right now, and this week is sort of highlighted in a big way because we have a new moon on Friday in the gate 20, the gate of patience. This entire quarter, this, this quarter that we're in creatively is all about putting language to the question, what do you want? To begin to construct a, 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 a template or an armature for the life that you want to build. And we create this template or this armature through language. So it's a really important thing for you to not only think about and contemplate what do you want, but to literally in some way commit your answer to language. Now you might not know specifically what it is that you want. You might simply want to live authentically or to live in a way that feels supported or to uh, live in a way that's peaceful. Those are not necessarily very specific wants and that's totally okay. This isn't so much about crafting a want that's so detailed in language that you can read it like some kind of manifesto. This is about using the language that begins to anchor in the energy of what you wanna create. You don't have to worry about the details. The universe handles the details, but you've got to start articulating at least the basics around what it is that you're wanting because that begins to anchor the form, to begin the process of being able to gain momentum around that creative process. The earth energies are both located in the sacral. The 14 is in the sacral. In fact, the 14 is one of those places where we learn to work hard for money. And the 34 is a gate of busyness. So it's interesting to note because earth, the earth energy is what grounds us is that we feel grounded when we are creating some kind of revenue or doing some kind of work. And when we are feeling empowered in a situation that can be extremely disempowering and for many of us has cut us off from our source of work. So you can already kind of see some of the conflict around being grounded. What happens is when we lose our grounding with these two energies, the tendency is to want to push. And we want to push potentially in the direction of compromising our authenticity, the shadow side of the eight, the sun and the eight, the shadow side is, is being inauthentic of doing whatever you have to do, compromising who you are, failing to be vulnerable and real because you don't think it's okay, safe, profitable, valuable to be who you are in the world. Or you might feel like you'd love to do X, Y, and Z to make money. But right now under these circumstances, you have to compromise. And I'm not saying that if you get the opportunity to make some money right now and you really need it, that you should blow that opportunity off because it's not what you really want to do. But what I am saying is do it with the awareness that it's a band-aid job. It's just what you're doing right now while you're continuing to grow some clarity around what it is you'd really like to do and you're waiting for the right timing because patience is the theme of the week. 
And if we push with power and if we push with work and if we push against our authentic self because we're not being patient for the perfect unfolding of what's to come, then we run the risk of pushing against right timing, of pushing ourselves out into the world in a compromised position and then putting ourselves right back where we were before this all started. Burned out, exhausted, depleted, struggling, hiding who we are, not valuing who we are, compromised in every way, including in our own personal integrity. So that's the shadow of this week, not particularly fun and exciting. The high up possibility for this, and again, I'm not saying if you need money and you have an opportunity to go get some, please do that. You deserve to be supported. And just, you know, I want us all to drop this whole mythology of do what you want and the money will follow. Sometimes you got to go do a job and do what you want over here. And it's not wrong and it's not bad and you're not failing. Okay. The universe doesn't always deliver money in the form of the perfect job every time. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes your passion project is over here. So stop feeling like you're failing if your work isn't bringing you the money that you want and you really rather be doing this over here, but you can't afford to do what you need to do to support yourself and still follow your passion. All right. I'm off my soapbox now. So the high part of this is this. This is a really beautiful week for you to explore. Where have you been compromising your value? Where have you maybe bought into stories where you think you're less than because of your old past experiences? Where have you been rationalizing or settling for less than what you really want or less than what you really deserve? Do you have the courage to be vulnerable and to admit at least to yourself what you really want and to hold space for yourself through articulating it somewhere, even if it's just in your flipping journal, Write it down, put language to it, and see that that language is like the seed in your garden. Tend to those words, tend to that vision, take care of it, nurture it, and nurture it with patience and nurture it with the awareness that the universe wants you to be who you are. The more you live true to who you are, the more you not only expand the possibility of well being and abundance for yourself in your own life, the more you add to that in the critical mass of the world. That's your job this week to get honest with yourself about what it is that you want and what it is that you really want to be supported in being. And here's a little hint, be yourself, be yourself because you are a cosmic once in a lifetime event and there's never been anyone like you before and there never will be anybody like you again. Be that because the more aligned you are with that, the more support, the more abundance, the more power, the more you create that not only for yourself and you deserve that, you create that for the world. That's it. Have a great week. Be well.